Let's take a look at an application of the set cover problem or the greedy approximation algorithm for the set cover problem, namely to the problem of finding the shortest superstring. So we have a set of strings over a finite alphabet and we want to find the shortest string that has all of these strings as substrings. We call it then the superstring or the shortest superstring. So let's take a look at an example. So these are my input strings. What is the shortest superstring? So for instance, isn't this the shortest superstring? Let's at least check whether it is a superstring. So C, B, A, A, I can find here. A, B, C, I can find here. And B, C, B, I can find here. So this is a superstring. Let me also point out, so we're looking at the shortest superstring, not the shortest super sequence. So the difference is in a sequence, I could have the individual characters of these strings at different positions, not consecutive, but here I really have to have the string somewhere as a substring. So it has to be B, C, B, and with nothing in between. Okay, but back to the question, is this a shorter superstring? It isn't. Well, if you look at the following, so I have A, B, C, Combine it with B, C, B in the following way and overlay it with C, B, A, A. I combine this into one. I have A, B, C, B, A, A. This is shorter. Covers all of the strings and it is actually the shortest. What we are going to assume in the following is that we don't have strings that are substrings of other strings in the input because then we could simply remove. This problem has a natural greedy approach. So let me show you approach, simply iteratively combine two strings which have as much overlap as possible. This is a very simple greedy approach. Here we would look at, okay, who has at most overlap? Um, a, B, C and B, C, B overlap in two letters and I combine them to get A, B, C, B and then, okay, then there are only two strings left. I again overlay them in such a way that they have as much overlap as possible. So this is a rather curious algorithm and the reason being is that the approximation factor is not known. So it's a very simple algorithm but we do not know what its approximation factor is. So it's only known that it's at least two. So I'm not claiming here that it's two, no, but it's at least two. But whether it's two or not, so it's conjectured to be two, but whether it's two we do not know. So it's only known that it cannot be better than two and for that there is this example. So if you look at these here, um, we have k in the exponent, then we would first combine these two into one string and then have the problem that we cannot combine this nicely with the b to the k plus 1, which we have to put at the end, while it would have been better to have the b to the k plus 1 in the middle. Yeah, so this algorithm is not better than 2, but we do not know whether actually it achieves it. This is not the algorithm that we're going to consider. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to reduce the problem to set cover. So in set cover, we have to think about, so what are the elements that we want to cover? What are the sets which we use to cover? And what is the cost of these sets? So our ground set is the set of strings. We need to cover all of the strings. We're going to use the following sets to cover those strings. So well, first of all, we're going to define this sigma i, j, k as a unique string that we get by taking s i as prefix, s j as suffix, and overlapping k characters, if this is possible. So if s i and s j can be overlapped in, the, in a way that have an overlap of k, then we're going to consider this sigma i, j, k. So this would look like this, I have S i, I have S j, I have this overlap of length k, possible overlap of length k, we could also, we will also use different lengths of k, and then this combined string is sigma i k. Okay. So as an example, we have here S i and S j, I can overlay them by overlaying a b and a b here, this gives me the string C A B A B A B C. 
this is sigma ij2. But of course, I could have also overlaid them ABAB and ABAB. Then the string that I get is sigma ij4 because I have an overlap of 4. And now these, each of these sigmas defines me a set. And the set is all the strings in our universe that are substring of this sigma ijk. This is definitely i and j, but there could be more that are. And the cost that we assign to this is simply the length of this sigma. And this gives me a family of subsets. And we have all ingredients or set cover. We have to be careful here. An optimal solution to this set cover instance is not necessarily an optimal solution to the shortest superstring problem. But what we can prove, the first part that we prove, is that if I look at the optimal solution to the superstring problem, so the length of the shortest superstring, and I compare this the minimum cost of the set cover instance which I construct from the strings, then I can say that this optimum for this of the super string problem is bounded by the optimum of the min cost of the set cover. And for this, I mean this is quite obvious, if we take an optimal solution to set cover instance, let's say this here, and now each of these corresponds to these pi, pi to pi k, those are words, and more specifically those correspond to these sigma i j k's, or some of those. Now these can, can simply concatenate. So I make a long string by concatenating all of those. Now this is definitely a super string because this was a cover. And if I look at the length of this, if I sum up all of these strings pi, then I get a sum of the costs of the pi. This is the optimum for the set cover instance. But this here is again the length of this super string. So we have constructed a super string which has the opt of the set cover instance as length and therefore the optimal length for a super string is at most that large. That was easy. Now the more interesting lemma is the following. The length, no, the weight of the optimal solution, the set cover instance, I can bound by two times the length of the shortest super string. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider an optimal super a shortest super string S, and from that we're going to construct a set cover instance which has cost at most two S. And S is the objective function for the shortest super string problem. Then I have my cost bounded by two times the optimum here, and then the optimum optimal solution to the set cover problem is at most this which is then at most two times the optimum for the super string problem. So how are we going to construct this? I'm going to look at how the substrings occur here. I'm going to look at the leftmost occurrence of a string in this S. And this is also the leftmost occurrence of this string um, S B1. So this is now covered. Now I look at another such string and another such string. So this is always left with occurrence of yet another string, not the same. And I continue until I have the last one. Let's call this E1 for end. So we have beginning one and end one. This is the last such string that still overlaps with SB1. And what we have now is that there is a corresponding set in for our set cover instance. Of course, we can simply, if we look at this part here, 
there's one string and yet another string with overlap and this gives me a sigma ijk and then the set for sigma ijk contains all of those sets so far so good now we're going to continue so now all of the remaining occurrences no longer overlap sp1 let's call the first such occurrence sp2 so again this is the leftmost occurrence of yet another string and we do the same procedure as before so we continue until we get the last one that overlaps with sp2 we call this se2 and there again we would have a corresponding sigma b2 e2 k2 because we have two strings with some overlap and now we can do the same again so the next string will no longer overlap with sp2 it will start somewhere here let's say we call it sp3 and we can do the same procedure and this again corresponds to a set of our set kava instance so a sigma b3 e3 and k3 here k3 corresponding to the overlap the crucial observation now is that if i look at the first sigma ijk and the third sigma ijk those do not overlap so why is that the case so if you look at the first one it ends at the end of se1 and then we have sb2 which ends later because we do not have strings that contain each other so it starts later so it also has to end later but we know that this third sigma only starts after sp2 ended but that in particular means that se1 also already ended so here pi1 and pi3 don't have overlap likewise pi2 and pi4 don't have overlap and pi3 and pi5 you get the picture so what does that mean for us we have that every string is in, contained in some in one of those sigma ij in one of the pj now we take all of them as sets so if we select all of the s if i want to pk the ones that we constructed by going this and this has cost okay, some of the length of these words because that is the cost that we assign and now we can use that every second one we do not have overlap between the first and the third or more generally between the j's and the j plus second one what does that mean if you look at any specific character s then it can lie in at most two of those substrings two of subsequent substrings because if it lies in ij then it can no longer lie in ij plus two also if it lies in also pi j plus one it cannot lie in pi j minus one so it can only be in two subsequent substrings if i again look at the cost of my sets this is not bounded by two times the number of characters number of characters we were looking at this thing which was a solution to the optimal and we're looking at the string which was a solution to the shortest super sequence problem so we have two times opt for the super sequence problem. so we get this factor two here between the optimal solution so now let's use this in an algorithm so what's the algorithm we first construct the set cover so given the strings as an input we can construct the set cover with all of the sigma ijk's then we use our greedy algorithm to compute a solution so let's say the solution is s1 to up to a where these are, are the sigma ijk's that we used and now we simply concatenate all of these strings it's a concatenation p1 p2 up to p a and what we now get is a 
2 times hn, where hn is the nth harmonic number approximation algorithm. And this immediately follows from the combination of the fact that the optimal solution to a set cover instance is a true approximation to the shortest superstring problem. And with a greedy algorithm, I get an HK approximation for the set cover, where HK is a K harmonic number. And K here is the cardinality of the largest set that occurs. So K is secret bounded by N, so I get log N, number bound. So we get here an O of log N factor approximation. So let's have a look. Can we do better than this? So we already saw that we have this greedy algorithm of which we conjecture that it has factor 2, but we don't know. The best that is known, there's an algorithm that gives you a factor 2.367 approximation. There's also an approximation lower bound, that means unless p equals np, there's no polynomial time algorithm that approximates this better than in this factor that is given, which is slightly more than 1. So to wrap up, here's once more the algorithm and the result that we got. So we had this hk or 2hn, where this is O of log n. So this is considerably worse than the best possible. But it's also simply an interesting application of set cover and the greedy set cover algorithm.